Hello? Can uh, you guys hear me? Time here. <laughs> ah, good to know. Audio is working. Okay, so uh, this lecture is uh, also on Yose, uh, Endgame. I uh, did a previous lecture on uh, Endgame as well that's also on, up uh, online, but uh, I decided I wanted to uh, do one that was a little bit higher level than uh, the last one. The, the last one we, we basically spent the first, uh, I would say, 30 minutes. Actually, we, we, there was a whole lecture on uh, covering just uh, you know the basic concepts like uh, What's 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 really a sente move? What what's reverse sente? What's double sente? So, with this lecture, we're we're mostly going to, uh, I guess, uh, skip the early stuff, and and we're going to dive right into uh, the topics of uh, basically. We're hoping that uh, everyone has a grounding. Hmm? Yes, yes, it will ideally if uh, the, my recording software works. So, this lecture is going to be uh, three parts. <laughs> we're gonna have three parts. First off, we're going to uh, start off with uh, endgame testages, uh, some of the most common ones that you will find, and uh, the very common mistakes that uh, people will do in these situations. And you know, sometimes these uh, testages will only end up gaining you maybe two to three points over you know the obvious move. But uh, these testages, they can really, really add up. If you just find three or four in one of your games, you can shift the score ten points. Yeah, no, three points is a lot, and they add up very quickly. And so even these, you know, these, these little two-point moves in Endgame are, are extremely, extremely important, especially as you uh, approach the Dawn rankings. So that's going to be the first part of the lecture. Uh, the second part of the lecture is going to be a more uh, classic uh, Yose lecture in terms of uh, we're going to look at a position and see, you know, how many points is uh, this move worth? Uh, pretty uh, classic. But the problems we're going to be looking at are not easy problems. I'm uh, expecting uh, the large majority of the people in the room to uh, struggle with uh, some of these problems, although uh, Hero, you probably will... Uh, <laughs> you might do all right. So, And then if there's time at the end, I have a particular professional game where there was a uh, Yose Tesuji that I just felt was uh, incredibly beautiful. Uh, or at least the, the potential for a test sheet that was just uh, incredibly beautiful. And it just really goes to show just how incredibly, stupidly complicated Yose can be if uh, you're not careful. So with that being said, let's uh, get ourselves started. <clears throat> so this is our uh, first problem of the evening. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to necessarily be uh, counting in terms of uh, exact points for these problems. Rather, we're going to be looking at what is the particular move that is uh, best for white to play in uh, the upper left. Now, you know, we, we could talk about uh, global moves on, uh, you know, this area, but we're, we're not really focusing on this. We're, we're solely focusing on uh, the upper left area, specifically with this move. You know, specifically right here, if uh, black has sente right now, black is going to uh, be able to take a15. And he's just going to come back, and Black's going to be able to end in Sente. And uh, White doesn't want this, of course, because this will uh, cause White to lose a few points. So, well, everyone's saying that uh, they know the move. So, tell me, tell me, what is uh, what is White's move here? What is uh, the test G that White has? Let's see. All the dons say they know. So, one idea at uh, a fifteen. One idea at B18. Oh, there seems to be some dissension in the ranks. Ah. Ah, yes, of course, K10. Always, uh, Lesha wouldn't be complete without it. Ah, so these two moves, well, these are the two moves to consider. Actually, B18 is uh, the better move here because it's uh, more thoroughly sente, I guess is uh, the easiest way to call it. So, if black captures here, white can do this, and then descend like this. And because all these moves were inside, uh, black really didn't gain anything in terms of uh, what he would have had if he just uh, responded with the descent at a16. But uh, it's it's far more sente than uh, simply playing uh, the descent at a15. So yeah, I mean it, it's yeah it's uh, just keeping sente. 
uh, it's good to know a few counters. If uh, black attempts to uh, counter the move, like say this, what does uh, what does uh, white do about this counter? Is white in trouble? Oh well, what does white do? A sixteen. What? I mean, a sixteen. <laughs> no, no, a sixteen is a fine move, actually. Yeah, that's fine, and it's uh, essentially the same result. <laughs> no, um, if you want to be a little bit fancier, actually, you can play. Uh, a15, which uh, I like, because if black decides to tanuki this move, yes, this is more gote. I agree. But uh, if uh, black decides to tanuki, you do get this fun little thing, which is uh, never bad. But no, I, I agree. Uh, A16 is uh, the superior choice in general. So yeah, this was a not too difficult one for starters, only two real moves to consider. This next one is uh, a very classic test G, but uh, you'd be amazed how many people uh, don't know it. So white descends here, and uh, what is uh, the proper black way, uh, proper proper black move to defend? Yes, yes, D19. This also isn't uh, particularly uh, difficult. The reason being is because of uh, B17. So the idea here is if uh, white can push in once. And then if uh, white descends, black can now decide to tanuki if there is a uh, legitimate move that's large enough. Because if white captures d19, you know, that's not the end of the world. If white doesn't finish off that move, black gets to end in sente like this. And uh, then black is fairly satisfied. Now, in comparison to uh, black just defending here, if white han is, now black cannot tanuki. Uh, black needs to defend himself now. So, uh, in essence, black is, uh, by playing the D19 move, black is uh, changing Gote into Sente, which is a huge, huge difference in endgame. Uh, very important uh, test G to uh, definitely add to your tool belt, if you haven't. So, uh, okay, this is another somewhat classic one, but uh, nevertheless, some people I still see uh, misplay this one. They'll get harder as we come along. The, the first few aren't... Uh, that difficult. So what we're going to be focusing on is uh, the upper left, and uh, obviously, you know, Black's uh, D18 stone is uh, lower than White stone. So the question is, what is Black's move to uh, do the most damage to uh, White's uh, top side? Assuming, of course, that a direct invasion will fail. Uh, F18, that's the first move, but uh, now what? Crosscut. Mm, Crosscut doesn't quite work, though. The problem is that white has this move. And if uh, black attempts to do this, the, it fails pretty badly for black. So crosscutting is uh, not a great idea. Any other ideas? G19, this uh, this is very dangerous for black because white will just play here. Hmm. Yeah, so the, the two general choices are uh, E17 and E18 and it really depends on the situation for which one is best. Right, right, it really depends on the center. If this cut through at uh, F16, if it's particularly valuable for you, and this will depend on your whole board situation, if it's valuable, then uh, E17 is better. Because if white does this, uh, black cuts him right back. And if this is a valuable cut for black, then uh, this is a fine exchange. So assuming that white has to uh, defend himself, now black can come back and take this move. 
and get himself a much larger corner in great sensei. And this is a proper way for black to play Yosei here. Now, if the center isn't that valuable, then you can just do this move. And in theory, white might be able to tanuki this move, but if white does tanuki, uh, this clamp is uh, very, very annoying and a very large move in terms of uh, further reducing uh, white's area. Yeah, it's, it's the end of the world. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, those are uh, basically the two options for uh, uh, black to play with. Let's see, which one's the next one? Ah, okay. This one's a little trickier. Um, I have to actually think about this one for a little while. Uh, oh, really? You know? Uh, you say you know this one. I actually uh, missed this one on my first attempt. Uh, I was uh, This one was shown to me by one of my friends, and I missed it on my first attempt. It took me uh, two or three tries. So, uh, yeah, take a, take a first guess. But uh, usually we'll, uh, we'll try and wait a little bit so people can actually read, rather than just uh, shouting at instinct. Ah, let's see, we have uh, lots of options. E19, uh, F19, E19, and, uh, oh, and E18. <laughs> Those seem to be the uh, three moves of choice. Well, let's see. So, problem with E18 is that it just doesn't work very well. Um, white can just go like this, and uh, black really doesn't have anything else that he can do. That's uh, particularly good. So, white's pretty happy if something like that happens. So, then the other move that uh, everyone seems to like is uh, F19. And uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, it's a good move. But uh, the question is, is it the best move? And I think that uh, after this happens, it's uh, probably going to be all right for uh, white. Hmm? Yeah? What does uh, what does black do? F nineteen, F eighteen. Oh. Mhm. Mm F eighteen, E eighteen. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, white seems fine. So, people are correct. The move is E19, but uh, it's actually pretty tricky to figure out how exactly to make it work. So, if white just so kindly plays this move, then, uh, you know, black can just connect back here. And, of course, black is uh, thrilled to be able to do this. I mean, there's still horrible logic that white, white needs to play another move or else uh, suffer an additional reduction. But uh, the question is, how does one counter the trickiest move that uh, white has? And that is uh, F18. How does uh, black counter this move? Yes, yes, Tengen, of course. No one has ever made that joke before, truly. You, your your humor is unique and uh, interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> ah, C17. Yes, that is uh, the key move. Um, yeah, the move order is usually G19 first, and then C17, and now it just works very very evilly. And then black does this, and it just becomes a thing of beauty. And white, uh, yeah, white just cries. There, there, there's just nothing else that uh, white can do. So white can't actually play uh, F18, but it's a uh, E18 at F17. Hmm. Oh yeah, I, I suppose you could say that it's maybe slightly better. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's legitimate. You can argue that that's a little bit better, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, same idea. <laughs> exactly.
exactly. All right, this one actually is taken from a professional game, so don't know it. Don't answer this one just yet, because there, there's a. So with this one, uh, if, if uh, some of you are familiar with the author uh, Fujisawa Shuko, uh, he's written a lot of really, really excellent books actually. But uh, incidentally, he apparently has a, a reputation as a uh, professional who's uh, among professionals at least. His yose is not amazing, which of course means that his yose is uh, far, far better than. Uh, all of ours, but among professionals, his uh, yose, despite his amazing uh, mid-game powers, his yose is uh, not as amazing. And he made a mistake here uh, as black in terms of yose that cost him uh, two points in this game. And uh, the turn, well, you should be able to uh, figure that out. Whose turn is it? Yeah, it's black's turn. <laughs> It's definitely Black's turn. So the question now is, uh, what is so? Uh, let's take a let's take a little bit longer. You know, if if uh, is it the obvious move of uh, uh, Black O three or what? Uh, let's uh, let's hear some guesses or at least uh, some reading, and uh, you know, don't just yell out an answer. I, I'd like to see hopefully some reading behind it. So we have some suggestions for O two. We have P1, we have S1. Really? S1? Oh, ah, okay, you, you, yeah, it's very, very funny, I suppose. Um, let's see, uh, we have O2 and uh, P1. Oh, and uh, someone said O1. Mm. Well, these, yeah, there really aren't any other moves to really think about. At this case, so of course this move fails miserably for black. Uh, white, uh, at the minimum, white can turn it all into seki, and uh, white's generally pretty happy with himself uh, turning it, turning it into a uh, seki. So O2 was uh, actually uh, Shuko's move, and this is the wrong move. Yeah, exactly. White's response is O1. And now black cuts, and then white plays here. And now black needs to capture. And then uh, white plays here. And once again, black needs to capture again. Yep, Shuko, Fujisawa Shuko made this mistake. And he lost two points in the corner. Uh, no, he lost, uh, what was it, uh, three points or so in uh, the corner because of that. Hmm, when? Oh, right here? <laughs> yeah, he can. But uh, then White can get uh, this move in Sente. And black can still and white can still take uh, t two and t one and force black to play another move. So I mean, at the end of the day, eh, I'm probably the same, because white gets l one in sente rather than letting black take l one in sente. So the proper move here is o one, because now after white takes this, black just goes here and period. It's done. And not only does uh, Black have himself five points in there, but uh, he also will get uh, L1 in Sente, and he has a 50% chance of getting uh, S1. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, a much better Yosei move. Probably a three point difference, especially with the, the continuations. So, really interesting problem. Okay, so this one is not so much a problem, but this is just a raw counting uh, type of situation. So these are situations that you see in all of your games, and I want everyone to take about uh, take a take a minute, and I want you to try and think of uh, the you know the the four questions: How much is each of the moves worth for Black? And it's surprisingly difficult to uh, uh, calculate this type of thing. 
but uh, you know, don't yell at answers. Yeah, it's, it's very tricky, but this happens all the time, all the time in games. You know, it, it's one of those things that uh, you just really need to learn. No, oh, wait, uh, you don't need to calculate it all together, just uh, each of them, but uh, feel free to, uh, one sec, uh, take a second. Well, yes, R19 is the most valuable, truly. That's uh, very uh, hard to see. All right, let's uh, let's uh, see some guesses. Starting, well, we'll say starting from uh, smallest to largest. What are uh, the values? And it's black to play. Let's see. Oh, lots of interesting guesses. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> all over the map. <laughs> Surprisingly difficult to uh, calculate something like this, huh? All right, uh, does everyone have uh, their guesses in? So, uh, the R13 one is indeed uh, two-thirds of a point. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. The uh, R15 one is worth uh, two points, actually. And those are uh, the two easiest ones to uh, figure out. The others, however, I... Uh, so, I actually got... Uh, I have a, a book... With, uh, for these last two, uh, with a professional's calculation of uh, exactly how much these two moves are worth. But uh, I, uh, I spent a lot of time trying to calculate how they came to their exact number, but I uh, struggled with it, actually. So, according to uh, Abe Yoshiteru, a nine-don professional, uh, R17 is worth uh, three and five-sixths points. And uh, R19 is worth five and five sixths, five and five sixths points. I, I shit you not. <laughs> I shit you not. That is what he said. <laughs> now, how he exactly came to those numbers, he doesn't show his math. And uh, oh no no no, he calculated. Uh, you know, it's a fifty percent chance. Remember, so let's say Black captures it, right? It's not Sente. That's the whole point. So black captures, and then there's a 50% chance that uh, black will uh, take Q19, and there's a 50% chance that white will take Q19. Then from this situation, there's a 50% chance that black will get uh, P19, and there's a 50% chance that white will get P19. Then from here, there's a 50% chance that uh, black will take O19, and there's a 50% chance that uh, white will take O19. And, uh, you know, you, if you do all the math and uh, calculate out all the probabilities, uh, apparently those are the numbers you get to, at least according to him. So, yeah, just to uh, one more time, o th uh, R13 is two-thirds of a point, R15 is two points, R17 is three and five-sixths points, and R19 is uh, five and five-sixths points. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. That 019 might be something. Okay. <laughs> Very complicated. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go on to uh, the next one. All right, so uh, this is another... This, we're going back to uh, Tessagies now. This is uh, a very uh, good Tessagy to know. So... Uh, well, you give people a second. So, you know, it's very easy to uh, look at that E19 stone and uh, immediately leap to a conclusion. 
but uh, actually you need to play there's uh, might be a little bit more here than uh, originally meets the eye um, be careful with the the first move that you choose is uh, I guess what I'll say <laughs> so what is uh, white's first move to play yeah it's very sneaky isn't it <laughs> Ah, huh? K18. That is a good answer. Yes. That is exactly it. The reason being, if black, if uh, white attempts to directly go in here, black has a brilliant counter. What's white's, uh, what's uh, black's brilliant counter? If white does this. Yeah, just uh, extend upwards. <laughs> and then white stone is, uh, becomes useless. And, uh, but interestingly, if uh, white plays like this, and black Ataris, and then white throws in, now we have a very different situation. Now, it's uh, become Ko. And it's a very, very, very fun little test G. Oh, can he? Oh, oh, I think I messed up setting up this problem. <laughs> normally, he's not supposed to do that. Yeah, I guess you could just normally reduce. There's another problem where he can't do that. Huh. Yeah, I guess you could just get a good reduction here. Okay. I'll have to find the other problem. But yeah, that's a, a nice size reduction in any case in Sente. So uh, yeah, you can get that too. But, uh, yeah, an interesting one. Hmm? Uh, you throw in a stone. I mean, uh, it's basically... Uh, uh, arguable. It's uh, uh, hard to say. No, I, I messed up the setting of the problem, though. There's a, a way to set it up where uh, black can't fill in like that. I think it's because I... Uh, it's because of my placement of uh, L18. I think it needs to be like this. Yeah. This is... Uh, I think this is uh, my mistake. Now it's quite different. Now black can't do that. Oh, yeah, then I should probably also add... Uh, true, true, true. Yep, alright, so my... Oops, my uh, setup mistake. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to be. Right. Now, uh, this doesn't work. Because uh, white can now do this. So now black has no choice but to play this move. And then this works. So, yep, misplayed stone. All right, let's uh, go on to the next one. Ah, this one is uh, not a particularly complicated one, but uh, classic. And if you haven't seen it before, it's really, really nice, actually. This is a, a bit of a subtle Tessiji, but it really works wonders for you in terms of... Uh, yeah, I did show this one before, but uh, not everyone was here last time. And it's a really good test G. Really, really, really good test G. Ah, P17, there you go, yes. P17 is indeed the test G. So this is the move, and it depends how white responds. If white responds here, black takes uh, R16 in Sente, and then takes this move in Sente thus uh, maximizing his points. If, on the other hand, white plays the other side, black has a really cool Tessiji. What's the move? Well, yeah. O17 is white's best response, because here, yeah, ouch, ouch, ouch. Uh, white just uh, resigns the game from here. There's... <laughs> got your nose. Yeah, basically. Uh, white really doesn't have much... Uh, 
that he can do after this. So yeah, it's a modest test of G, but uh, still very nice for a few extra free points. Uh, not something you would uh, want to forget. <laughs> That's an interesting line. All right, let's. Uh, that was a, an easy one. Let's go on to the next one. Ah, this one uh, happens very often in games, but I often see it omitted even by uh, many of my fellow Fordons. Um, but it's a very, very good test G here. And uh, so, yeah, well, you also have to know where we're focusing on. We will be focusing on black, for the sake of argument, black wants to seal off the top. Because, you know, with white having uh, P18, there's uh, all sorts of little reduction moves that uh, white could potentially play there. So black wants to seal his top. What is the best move for black to uh, seal his top? And feel free to take a second to uh, think without, uh, you know, don't yell out an instinctual answer, read a bit. You know, these uh, Yossi situations require reading oftentimes. And this is a little bit trickier than uh, some of the ones beforehand. Let's see, we have uh, some suggestions for Q19. Anyone else? We have O19. Seems to be the uh, general consensus that uh, Q19 is the move, and uh, you're right, actually. This is the move. And the reason being is that white now will respond like this, because of the eye. And now uh, black can descend, and then black can descend again. And black can take both in sente. By comparison, right. By comparison, if uh, we just take this move, and then we take this move, now it's uh, it's not. You know, white just uh, tanukis here. If uh, black attempts this, uh, white can counter like this now. So uh, move order is very, very important. And that 019 move is huge, huge yose. So this one little, uh, this throw in stone is very, very, very important in terms of uh, sealing off black's top side in uh, sente. A small test of G, but uh, very, very important. It, it will show up, you know, once you really start looking for these things, it will just show up in game after game after game. All right, let's take a look at this one. Um, so this is the type of situation that uh, will probably happen often in your games. You know, someone will just uh, do a little second line jump into your territory, and they're making some sort of, uh, you know, poor shaped corner, and you want to defend your area from white, you know, playing a horrible, horrible, evil move, you know, like this or something. And this, of course, is devastating, and you want to prevent this. And so the question is, what is the best technique for... Uh, black to do so. And you know, once again, feel free to uh, take more than a few seconds if you'd like. We are not particularly rushed. We're making a uh, very good time. Now, this one's interesting. Oh, yeah. By all means, answer uh, answer away. If you if you uh, think you have it, don't just uh, throw an answer you think of the guess, though. I hope you have a reading behind it. Let's see. Whoa. Lots of suggestions for this one. We got ourselves P19. We have ourselves T17. We have ourselves T18. I uh, seem to be uh, the main guesses. S16 looks funny. Ah, interesting. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at these. So, the generic move, of course, is uh, S17, but uh, this is a bad move because uh, no, actually, it doesn't allow T17. No, 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 no. It does not allow T17. No. Yes, it allows T18. Exactly. Right, it allows T18. And uh, that, of course, is huge. If uh, black dares to Tanuki, he will lose uh, oodles of points along uh, the side. And he will uh, probably not be particularly happy with himself for it. 
So that's the generic move. Ah, uh, yeah, well, T17 also isn't right, unfortunately. Mm. So the ideas of the throw-ins aren't necessarily bad, but they're not the first move you want to play. Actually, the only move to play here is T18 because of a particularly interesting tessigy that uh, black has. So let's say that uh, white attempts to uh, resist like this and goes uh, to sit, you know, to make himself a big corner. What's interesting is, yeah, there's a really, really cool co in here. If uh, white tanukis, black just does this. And now you have a, a co suddenly uh, appear in the corner. So white owes another move. And uh, black is thrilled to have uh, been able to seal it off so easily. Now, if we, uh, if we compare this to uh, white taking T18, well, th that's what I was just going to say. If we compare this to white taking T18 from, you know, black just descending at T17 like this, it is true that uh, black does, or white does gain himself one additional point in uh, this area in comparison. However, even though that's the case, because black is uh, able to seal white off, this is this T17 move, even though black's two sealing stones in the other variant are right uh, here, if black doesn't play another move, I mean, white's going to get to do this. It's, it's pretty devastating. Oops. No, white just goes like this. And then later on, this will be uh, white's privilege. And white will end up doing this. So uh, that sealing off is uh, very, very valuable and worth more than the, the one additional point that uh, white increases his corner with uh, the T18 Tessigy. So yeah, definitely a, a good uh, variant to remember. You know, magic happens at the 2-1 point. And there's just always... Uh, oh, of course, Sente. Well, you'll say Tessigy's almost always revolve around uh, Sente of some kind. Well, not almost always, but many of them do. Oh, okay. So this is one, actually. When I was, uh, you know, looking around for a few interesting Tessigy, I actually... Oh, no, it's Black's turn. It's... No, 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 it's Black's turn. Um, some of them are. Some of them aren't. Um, so, this one, I didn't know. Uh, I hadn't seen this one before. So, uh, well, it's Black's turn, right? It's not White's turn. Obviously, if it's White's turn, he plays S18. We all know this. But uh, it's Black's turn. And the question is, how does Black ensure that he lives in the best possible manner? Mm, some of them are from Get Strong at Endgame. Um, yeah, some of them are. Oh, good. I'm uh, happy that you read it. Don't worry, we will have a, a fair chunk of problems that are not in that book. So, uh, fear not. Mm. So T16, and now White's response is actually interesting. White can actually respond at uh, T15 here. And so the question is, what is the proper black follow-up? Oh, thank you for not running in. Always appreciated. R18... S18, T17. So T17 does function, but uh, the problem is black has to capture and white gets sente. So you maximized your points with T17, but is there a way maybe to uh, maybe take slightly less points? Well, do you want sente? You tell me. Is, is it more valuable to take the three additional points in the corner? Or is it more valuable to take Sente? And usually, I think, unless you're at the very end of the game, it's usually better to take the Sente. So yes, S18 is the move. And then white can capture like this. And of course, you know, later on, white T18 is very, very large. But, uh, you know, the fact that black is living here, 100% alive, and in Sente, is a huge benefit. 
for himself. Now, if there's nothing bigger on the board, you know, black could, if, well, if black's going to respond, I mean, he should just play here if there's nothing bigger on the board. But uh, assuming that there's some other critical move somewhere on the board that black just really needs to play, uh, S18 is uh, the move to take Sente. Absolutely. All right, so this is a, a classic Joseki type of situation. And uh, rather than uh, figuring out the exact tesogy, this is uh, more of a uh, counting. Actually, no, it's it's not Q17 always. Um, Q17 actually can be fairly dangerous in uh, some situations. Yeah, R18 is generally the proper tesogy, but this is actually a uh, counting problem. And so the question is, how big is white... Uh, R18 versus black F17. So we're, we're moving on to a counting stage. And so don't just, uh, yeah, this is definitely something you'll have to think. Yeah, unless you've memorized this problem before, this is uh, definitely one requiring thinking because it's uh, fairly complex. Just to make sure everyone knows, uh, cutting directly is, can be pretty dangerous. It depends on the situation. Sometimes it's okay, but uh, if black wants to attempt to resist, he can actually play like this. And now it can get very complicated, depending on uh, what's going on on the board. It really depends, but uh, definitely something to uh, consider. So usually we say that uh, R18 is uh, the proper uh, move for white here. So no, take some time. Uh, keep thinking uh, how large it is because it's uh, not uh, immediately obvious, especially with uh, the myriad of uh, variations that follow. But uh, it's not impossible. It's uh, it's countable. Oh, it's a uh, well. That that's the point. You're comparing. White's move versus Black's move. That's how we uh, count. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a difficult one. Absolutely. See, we have uh, some wildly divergent answers. 26 points, 13 points, 17 and two-thirds. That's fancy. All right, uh, well, for the sake of uh, anyone want to get in any uh, guesses? Final uh, roll for guesses, anyone? 18 and a half. All right, the uh, actual answer is 14. 14 points. So, uh, 14 points is true value. Let's uh, let's take a look at why. So, if white goes here, uh, black needs to respond here, and white goes here, and black goes there, and usually uh, white will actually play this move. Mm, what about black playing Q17 instead of Q18? I mean, I guess my problem with it is that uh, I suppose White could just uh, roll back himself. And I don't necessarily think that this is, uh, you know, going to be uh, amazing for Black, comparatively. I don't think Black usually does that. Uh, I suppose it's possible. But uh, the, the most common move is uh, Q18. I mean, you know, Sente is, of course, always a relative concept. So you always have to take that into consideration. But usually, Q18 is a move you can expect. And then white will generally uh, finish it up immediately because uh, it's a pretty massive gain. And if you're going to play the original move, then uh, following up here is really a, a great uh, follow-up. 
continuation. And of course, White gets this. This is his uh, right, his privilege to get, because it's sente. And so White's variation ends with this. It's a uh, gote with uh, sente continuation is uh, for White's side. And then on uh, black side, black just descends. And then later on in the game, white will be able to get this in sente. And that's white's privilege. And if we uh, compare the two between themselves, we can see that uh, from this situation, white has himself uh, three. Just uh, considering you know the most uh, local pertinent points. And uh, Black has himself the points that he has that will be lost in the other variant. Five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. And so in the other variation, Black loses these nine points. And White gains himself uh, five additional points. And... Uh, Minus 9 and plus 5 gives us uh, 14 points. Yes, it's very big. So, 14 point move. Alright, let's go on uh, to the next one. Alright, so this is a fairly common, uh, not, no, maybe not fairly common, but uh, common enough, uh, Joseki, that uh, it's still played. And uh, so this is uh, based off of that Joseki. And uh, what we have now is a very, very big corner situation. And so this is uh, probably among the most difficult problems that we will have tonight in terms of counting. Um, when I first gave myself this problem, I was, uh, I was off by uh, two points here. So I was uh, very sad. So the question is, white taking uh, Q18 versus black taking R18, which of course are their, uh, both of their obvious follow-ups. So the question is, white Q18 versus black R18, how big is that? And this is, <laughs> this is an exceedingly difficult question. If anyone here can get it exactly right, I will give you major kudos. And cookies, of course. Does S16 work? Oh, black cannot play S16 here, no. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to uh, take some time. This is uh, a lot of uh, complicated factors. Uh, go into uh, each of these, especially on White's end, and White's follow-ups, and whether or not those are sente, is a complex question. But uh, still, in general, we can say that uh, th there's one path, th there's one uh, proper counting way, usually. Uh, our first guess is in eight, 18 points. High number. Let's see. Let's see uh, what the others start uh, rolling in as. Eighteen plus, we can call it. So someone says, "Well, someone's guess is eighteen plus." Final answer. <laughs> Anyone else want to uh, take a stab at this uh, particularly complex monstrosity? to 23. Ah, one guess at uh, 17 points. Two guesses at 15 points. All right, final, uh, final call going out. Anyone else have any guesses? Going once, 20 points. Going twice, Going three times and ah, a hundred points. My God, 
Well, no one can outdo that, I suppose. All right, so everyone's guess is in, and uh, you'll all be happy to know, except for uh, Mr. Hero, who uh, guessed at 100, all of you uh, guessed too small. <laughs> the uh, actual value is uh, 24 points. I, might, I actually only guessed uh, 22 points when I uh, first did this problem myself. So uh, I got this one wrong. I was uh, very sad. But uh, let's see why. So now, of course, if black decides to immediately respond like this, this is actually considered a, a local success for white. Uh, white can actually tanuki here if he likes, if there's something large, because just this exchange of Q18, uh, 24 points, this uh, exchange of uh, Q18 for, P, for P18 is by itself beneficial for, uh, for white to take because if uh, black attempts his R18 move and uh, unlike in the previous situation without uh, this exchange first what can, uh, what can white do against uh, this P18 stone that uh, white could not do previously without that uh, Q8 stone, Q18 stone there any ideas? Yeah, he can clamp, right? And this is a possibility. And uh, well, Q17 potentially as well. But if you want Sente, this is uh, probably the best way. Yeah, that, that's the other possibility. Yeah, this is a, a possibility as well. I just don't like this. This annoys me. Yeah, this this really frustrates me. So I uh, I think I prefer the other way as uh, the more proper one. So uh, yeah, so black can't respond because even if black just responds once, that's considered uh, by itself a success for white. So if white gets this move, this is almost always I will say going to be sente. But uh, you know if if black doesn't respond to this move. This is just devastating to Black's position. I mean, he, Black now has a cutting point. Uh, White has a new monkey jump. Black, uh, unless Black stones are already fortified from other stones, Black simply cannot allow this to happen at any time in Endgame. It, it would just destroy the game. So, you know, nine, I would say 99 out of 100 times, Black needs to play something like this to uh, keep his shape intact. And this allows White to actually push in once again. Um, and once again, most likely in Sensei. Um, I mean, you, you could try and make an argument, I suppose, that Black doesn't have to respond here, but uh, allowing White to take o, O17 is a massive, massive move. It opens up two cutting points and those two stones and destroys Black any, uh, any great shape that uh, Black had. So we could generally consider that this will be a Sensei move for White to take. Now, if we compare, uh, black is going to uh, roll in here. And, of course, you know, type, similar type of situation. If white does respond, if, you know, if white uh, does respond like this, then uh, black is thrilled. You know, black just tanukis here and uh, absolutely thrilled with the situation. So we assume that white doesn't. And uh, then black's follow-ups are much more simple in terms of uh, their senteness. I mean, this is pretty clearly Sente, uh, pretty clearly Sente as well, and uh, just uh, ends like that. And if we, uh, oops, not that one. No, not that one. There we go. If we uh, compare this one with uh, the other one, we get ourselves a 24-point difference between the two sides. Very, uh, very complicated problem. Yeah, that was uh, something I missed my first time through. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at uh, the next one. Oops, already did that one. Yeah, just did that one. Ah, this one is... Uh... <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> we can say that's fine. Okay, so this is a position that's, uh, or something along these lines, is something that I'm sure has appeared in uh, some of your games before. Uh, and this kind of invasion for white. And this is a pretty uh, standard variant in terms of uh, white living in the corner. And white doesn't have any problems living in the corner. And uh, so the question now is, uh, you know, white does not have to play s18 now. If white does not play s18 now, he can still live without it. But uh, the question is, how many points, even though white can live otherwise, how many points is uh, s18 worth? And uh, definitely take some time to think about this one, because uh, this one's uh, not exactly as uh, clear-cut as it first appears in terms of counting. So be careful not to get tricked. But uh, yeah, we'll give people a little bit of time to uh, consider uh, counting for this one. So yeah, this is actually the last problem, and uh, one of the harder ones to get right. Uh, after this, uh, we will uh, take a brief look at uh, one of my uh, favorite endgame testages. Well, the, the testage itself actually was avoided in the game, but uh, the fact that uh, both players were able to uh, see that such a move existed and were able to avoid uh, the kind of testage that uh, was there just goes to show how much evil there is. Oh, and the guesses start coming in. Uh, 10 points, 11 points. Don't forget to take into account, uh, you know, Sente. Oh, and the Fordon says more. I wonder if he's right. <laughs> oh, is it double? Well, you tell me, Rukas. Is it double sente? Well, if uh, if white takes this move, does black have to respond? Must black respond locally to this move? Not usually, though. Ah, okay. So uh, the actual answer to this move is uh, if uh, black takes the move, well, for white to take this move is uh, 10 points in reverse sente. So we can essentially consider it uh, 20 points value. Because if black takes this move, so excellent guess, Rukas. So if black takes this move, yeah, 10 points in sente, that's exactly right, yeah. If black takes this move, uh, white will need to do this. And then if black likes, he can finish like this. <laughs> yeah. And so black can take all of this in uh, sente, and there's really nothing that white can do about it. And so uh, this uh, gains black for four to five points and uh, loses white another, uh, gains black about five points and loses white about five points. And uh, it's uh, reverse sente. <laughs> yeah, there's also an interesting code. So we can call it uh, 10 points reverse sente or uh, 20 points is an accurate assessment. All right. So last part of this lecture is going to be a uh, just to show uh, probably the coolest endgame uh, testage that a pro uh, found that I had seen. So this game is from uh, 1966, actually. Uh, one player we probably know, uh, Sak Sakata Eo. He's uh, somewhat well known today. Uh, the other professional I had uh, never heard of before. So uh, this is the situation. And uh, the question is white plays p5. And the question becomes how does black respond to it? And this is, it, there's so many beautiful moves in here that uh, white can do if black attempts the obvious move there, there's just a downright sadistic move and, and by the way if, if anyone in this room can uh, figure out the entire variant 
for why black cannot play this move. If anyone here can figure out the entire variant, I will, I will happily take classes from you because uh, I, I would like to learn Go from you. So why can black not play this move? So R3 is the one that immediately appeals because it looks like the vital point. But the problem with it is that black can respond here and then play the really, really nifty Tessigy of, uh, well, really just seal them, you know. This should be enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My move order is bad. Well, no, regardless, though. It doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, black is fine. And black should be uh, just fine. Oh, S4. Oh, S4 is an interesting move. Um, I mean, I suppose White can try and uh, make himself some shape inside, but I don't think it works. Hmm. I think uh, I think Black should uh, win this fight. He has a lot of outside liberties. Interestingly, well, so yeah, later on in the game, S5 was done for different reasons. But uh, now S5 here is still a little bit too shallow. Uh, black can just give white the reduction and uh, take life. And this, of course, isn't bad for white, but uh, it's not the best thing that uh, white can do. Hmm? What, now? Well, I suppose, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Then black just goes here, and it's uh, the same thing. Mm. Not a terrible idea, but uh, and it looks cool, but it doesn't quite work. Almost works. But... Uh, White has uh, no way to continue here. See, so, yeah, a good thinking, but... Uh, ah, so someone finally guessed it. Actually, yes. The correct move, the reason why black cannot play this, is S3 of all moves. Which does not look intuitive in the slightest. But, uh, well, the question is, why is it a good move? And that's the most interesting part. So let's see. If black takes the obvious shape move of uh, R3, which of course appeals to everyone, because of its shape, at least at first glance, it seems to appeal to everyone. And then white extends out. And then black really doesn't have much of a choice. I mean, if black does this, then he's just, you know, resigning the game to white, essentially. So black has no choice but to play this move. Yeah, and but now the next few moves are particularly beautiful. Any ideas? What are uh, the next few moves? What does uh, White supposed to do here? Now R four is the same problem. Remember, we already did this. What here? Okay, so ah, someone guessed uh, R2. Yes, R2 is actually the move. But uh, what follows it? Black goes here, and now white to play? Yes, S1, and that is the thing of beauty. And just watch, watch this, uh, dare I call it, magic appear. So if black attempts this, white does this. And black can't fill because he kills himself by ko. Yeah, if black attempts this, it's still ko. So, uh, 
So what if, but what if Black does the all-out resist? No, no, this isn't the game. Both players saw this and did not play, uh, Black did not play P4 because they both saw this. They talked about it after the game. And now it gets really cool. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it, that's just like the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> that's just too cool. So, yeah, this was uh, probably uh, the coolest USA problem I, uh, I ever saw. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, cool one. So, yeah, uh, that about sums up our uh, lecture on uh, Yosei. I uh, hope everyone got to leave today with a few more uh, Yosei testages in their tool belt and uh, maybe a, a little more skill in uh, counting points. You know, one of the most difficult skills in a game, it's one thing if you, you have time on your hands and, you know, you're just uh, in a calm situation where you can spend a few minutes and uh, count out a situation exactly. But uh, oftentimes in our games, you know, we're under 30-second Yomi or in a lot of KGS games, much less. And uh, it becomes an equally important skill to be able to, uh, even if we can't exactly guess, but to closely estimate uh, what a uh, given point value is. <clears throat> Wait, if black S2 to S4, what is white 2? Hmm? In response, as for oh, like this? Yeah. Well, black can live like this, but uh, it's not enough for black. It's not good life. So when that it, what ended up happening in the game, actually, I'll take a, a mild detour, is black took a, a, a time suji and then uh, filled out here and gave white the points and then filled in there. And then what White ended up doing was uh, taking S5 in Sente. And then White had to take the final move at uh, S2. And uh, Black was very sad here about uh, the losses he endured because of uh, that test G of White's. And uh, White ended up winning the game by, uh, what, uh, two and a half points, I think. But uh, yeah, that was uh, because of that test G. Oh yeah, time switches happen in pro games, absolutely. Pros, uh, pros run out of time just like uh, the best of us. <laughs> pros are human. But anyway, yeah, as I was saying, so, you know, especially on KGS, learning how to uh, count Yosei fast is its own skill, actually. And sometimes you, you honestly just don't have time to read out the points to, you know, to a decimal point. But if you can get yourself to within, you know, two or three points, of the proper amount if, if you're looking at the, the big Yosei moves. You know, if you're looking at 8 to 10 points, and you can uh, just look at a board and in 30 seconds uh, get a general estimate of uh, the big moves in play, you will uh, make yourself immensely stronger. Yeah, well, you know, Yosei, almost, uh, like te almost like Joseki's, you know, th there's a some amount of memorization that's necessary. You really should study all the common shapes that appear in Yosei, and uh, how much they're worth, or at least, you know, the range of situations. You know, if someone has a, a second line stone and that stone is an Atari, you know, what is the general range of points that uh, a situation like this, you know, what, what's the general range that a move like uh, M18 falls between? And uh, this is the type of thing that you should just uh, have memorized in your head, at least the range for what it happens, just so that if you're under a 30 second time clock, you can, you know, look at six different Yosei positions, and within a few points, well, five to ten is a bit much in terms of a range. You usually, we can usually call it about, uh, you know, seven points, perhaps eight. Really depends on uh, the situation. Sometimes it's only worth five, sometimes it could be worth ten, but uh, really depends on uh, the situation. So, estimates are hard. But uh, yeah, that about sums up this uh, Yosei lecture. I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully I will uh, see you all next week, or maybe this weekend, uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, after uh, the next week, I will probably take a, a brief hiatus, because uh, there's the Go Congress coming up, and uh, I will be uh, studying for that, hoping to uh, do well in the 5 down division. So uh, yeah, if any of you are also going to the Go Congress, I uh, hope to see you there. Uh, yeah, so feel free to send me a message if you'd like to uh, meet up at the Congress. So, uh, farewell. 
Adios, and uh, thanks for coming.